Mike Conroy is standing by in a lovely bright room. I feel very jealous of all these bright rooms. Uh, Mike is a uh, vice president of R&D at Avea Communications, which delivers large scale enterprise and mid-market collaborations and customer engagement solutions via public cloud and enterprise hosted software and managed services. Uh, Mike, it's a real pleasure to have you with us today. I'm going to let you talk more about what you do because it would be a disservice if I tried to get into it. So uh, the floor is all yours. You get to speak for about 20, 25 minutes and then we'll have a couple of questions at yeah, the sure. end that people can post on the app. So I'll hand over to you, Mike. It's all yours. Ruth, you're hearing me okay? I'll I am, certainly, yeah. Loud and clear. Okay, I'll give it to the end of the day and the beach awaits me in Galway as well. I'll keep oh. it. I'll keep it short. You're killing me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking, of course, because um, I do live out in Galway. Um, I'll take you through a few slides, but I, I, won't, uh, I won't bore the pants out of everybody who might be watching. Um, as Ruth says, my name is Mike Conra. I'm Vice President of Engineering with um, Avaya Communications, which is a global company uh, with the headquarters in Galway for international and a uh, long history of both presence in Ireland going back almost 50 years and also um, a, uh, a long heritage of innovation globally and in Ireland. So I'm going to share, I'm going to go through a few slides and then when we come back online and I'll answer some questions with, uh, with Ruth. So let me see. So Okay, I'm hoping everybody is seeing the slides. Um, if not, please let me know, Ruth, okay? Um, so, um, given the nature of the conference, obviously I'm here as a employer. I lead an organization of uh, almost 1,800 people around the globe. It's a uh, organization that has a substantial presence in Ireland with an engineering center of 250 people. Um, as you can see from my uh, hair, I have been in the industry a long time. So I've come through my graduate fairs all the way through a number of companies helping to contribute to building out the uh, tech, tech uh, ecosystem in Ireland, hopefully over a period of over 30 years. So um, I've landed in, um, in a company that I've uh, been in in the past and our business is the business of customer experience. And nothing's been more important in the, I think in the last uh, 12 to 18 months than transitioning both the uh, company, both the customer experience and the employee experience. So to set some context before I talk about the opportunities at Avaya and maybe talk with Ruth a little bit about our experiences and uh, from a career perspective and um, how, how people are managing to the, the recent environment is, let me talk a little bit about Avaya, because we've been at the, our technology essentially powers um, experience and experience comes in the form we're in now with Zoom communications. We build proper products similar to Zoom communications uh, for the enterprise um, with a similar experience and which has transitioned obviously millions and millions of people from and in the office and traveling experience to a fully virtual experience. And through the power of the internet and the power of the communications that we've been working on within Avaya for the last several years, um, like as with other companies, we've met that transition very successfully. But equally, um, Avaya is at the center of customer engagement and customer experience. Uh, we build in Ireland the technologies that are six million communication seats. So that means six million agents. And by agents these days, we don't mean voice agents. We mean agents that are interacting with you as a user around chat, asynchronous messaging, social media, and bringing those channels together through the customer journey that you start as you engage with um, as a customer um, through the public service or through private companies and retail. So we're in the business of creating this technology that manages that at scale. We have created 4,000 patents over the years. Many of those have come out of Ireland. 
and we've we support over 100 million users think about that for a second 100 million users in in collaboration technologies like we're sitting with today and so um what's been really fascinating in in in, in the last year is the way the accelerations happened around multi-experience multi-experience whether whether you're uh, supporting um COVID vaccine program or dealing with contact tracing where we build technology for, or whether you're supporting the retail sector or the chaos that's been the travel industry or the hospitality industry, our technology sits behind those in terms of managing the communications in real time in the way the customer wants that to be managed, which historically has been through, through voice, but obviously increasingly and almost and dominating is through a digital experience that starts either through a browse or an SMS and moves through um, social uh, asynchronous messaging and all of those. And, and that experience has to be tracked in a seamless fashion such that as you move data between those experiences, we as a company make that a sort of a customer empowered experience. So that's the technology we build. We're excited about it. We've been doing it for a lot of years in Ireland and we plan to do it for many, many more years to come in the 250 person RMD center that, uh, that sits in Galway and part of the 2000 uh, population that sits around the world. The, that means that, um, and it's, it's a double set, particularly in, in, in uh, as, per, as the previous speaker, the power of the employee in terms of working from home, being available as when, you, when you want to be available, to be a sort of an ad hoc engagement experience person, even though you work in a sort of back office environment. So this, these range of experiences that are set between the employee, you as an employee and you as a customer is, has blurred dramatically through technology and through the need to deliver a customer experience that is at the right time with the right people in the right place. And so I guess we were moving along at that pace in the industry, but uh, COVID came. And so it's been transformational. It's been transformational in what people talk about in terms of their own personal work environment, but it's transformational in terms of the, in terms of the industry. And if you think about it for a moment and think of any large tech company um, where you know, thousands, literally thousands of people are retail or, or, or um, travel, but sat in offices and we, powered the transition over literally weeks um, to move that population from an experience that was together in an office environment to an experience that was distributed in people's homes across the internet, interacting through voice and digital experience. And so that's accelerated uh, the adoption of technologies at an incredible pace. But what makes the difference is, is obviously the technology being seamless and experience. We have some great examples here of how we've seamlessly managed the transition of customer experience, how we've managed to keep students safe through our collaboration technology, how we've supported contact tracing technologies for millions of users, and how you kind of keep that experience sort of personal and engaging and using the right and the right channels. And ultimately that means it's not what people say or what they remember or what they did, it's like how they felt, how they felt through a contact tracing application, how they felt through a uh, complex engagement around um, around purchasing or public service and the technology that we sits, sits behind that that makes it as personalized as possible and as connected as possible. So um, I'd uh, love to talk to Ruth a little bit about our experiences there. I'm here also as an employer in uh, in a world of where we fight every day for talent, and we're open for business. We have. A large campus in Galway. It's a distributed campus that um, employs about 25 different nationalities, and people distributed through over, over the, through the country. And that's obviously increased. We're on a significant hiring uh, campaign, and we we've, we've transitioned our whole engineering organization to cloud-based development environments over the last couple of years, and we're now accelerating that in support of the transitions that are happening in the industry. We have invested in a, in a world class and refreshed our overall working environment. So we're totally committed to a non-premise, fantastic experience for employees. And I feel passionately about uh, the importance of that in terms of innovation and career development. Um, so that investment is, is significant, but we will continue to offer 
urban or working and bring together for events and to really facilitate career development. So uh, with that, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I have had um, a lot of experience in the industry, probably through 25 million grants of graduates through a number of companies yeah. and other uh, hiring mechanisms. So Ruth, I'd be delighted to answer any questions that you've got or others have got. Great. Thank Mike, thank you so much. That was very interesting. And uh, to remind people that, yes, our the, the portal is open, if that's the right word to use even, that you can uh, pop some questions in for Mike. Uh, at this stage, we've we've a couple, we certainly have uh, some time left to ask some questions. I like the way it, it's something I've noticed during the day, Mike. The idea of career development—it's not just come in now, put out the fire, and then we'll get rid of you. There does seem to be not just an element of not even an element necessarily of care for an employee, but a real interest in employee retention. Um, I suppose if there's people watching who might be. Uh, dubious or may not have experienced before. Can you talk maybe a little bit about the real advantages of retaining employees from, let's say, your perspective? Well, um, sorry, I'm, uh, I may have a problem with my sharing there. I'm, uh, That's as, all right. Don't worry. Uh, Listen, as we, it happens uh, us all. <laughs> as, we, as we use fantastic Avaya technology, I'm not, I'm not as uh, often on Zoom as maybe everybody else in the world. Um, so, um, yeah, no, it's 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 obviously retention. Retention is 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 key. Um, you know, um, I said earlier that I feel our my personal experience goes through a number of companies, but the company I'm currently with, the I, I I worked with the company when it was much earlier in my career, mm. and many of the people who worked there at the time, and that's you know, 30 years ago, are still uh, leaders and and engineers. You know, on a purely technical path of the organization. But it's also a mix of, of you need the vibrancy. You need the vibrancy of, um, of obviously graduate engineers and early career people who come from different industries. Um, and that, and that, you know, that's been the significant shift in the tech industry in the last five to 10 years. There was a degree of um, individual sort of uh, silos sometimes within various tech pillars. It's been democratized and there's now a lot more people. That, so you can move very easily between industries because of the standardization of technology and, and the internet and the cloud. So the retention of both domain experience where you're sort of aware of your customers and the experience they expect, and then being able to bring, I call it platform technologies from any industry and ideally every industry together. And so I think we're all in a war for talent and everybody's trying to keep their attrition levels, you know, below 5% in a, in a, in a world that's, um, and, and so we're passionately committed to that. We think a very big part of that is is the dynamic that exists between experienced staff and people from different different industry. And that's why we passionately believe in the power of everybody still coming together and in, in, in collaboration, collaboration, you know, great work environments. But the reality is we have to do that in a hybrid fashion. So finding that balance can be tough between you know, wanting most people to come together because you know that your early career people depend on the experience of others that mentoring that informality and that corridor chats and the water cooler and all that stuff and yet you want to um, offer you know the people who have the you know the leadership and the ability to be very flexible from a retention perspective that's a tough balance for employers at times right because you feel a responsibility as a aging uh, leader or as an aging tech person to invest time face to face with people who are and, and create an environment where people can, can learn. So it's going to be an interesting time over the next year or two, particularly where I think employees are going to have more choices around how they work, how they want to work. And they balance that with not just the interest of that employee or the or the employer, but the interest of the wider population of, of area career staff who need and depend on um, the, the experience. You mentioned for the next year, something that I learned just earlier today is that there is a massive gap in the tech sector of, do I remember the figure? Is it maybe 125,000 people that over the next, literally over the next year and a half, that's how many we are short to keep the tech sector going. Are you confident that you, you and others in your situation can fill the required spots? 
Well, no, I mean, I, I've been I'm probably less so now, but certainly I've been on every national forum and every national body that's existed at some point in time, you know, working with, you know, uh, IBA and, and AmCham and 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 other um, IBEC and other lobbying bodies. And I spent, I actually spent a little bit of time in the academic sector. So, um, you know, I kind of believe in you need, you need, um, you need obviously a lot of talent in the universities coming out first and foremost. So that's the fundamental. It takes a while for that to work its way through. Um, so you depend on that volume. Uh, we depend uniquely. We depend a lot on being a very open economy and bringing as much experience from abroad as possible. I, I run teams in India, Ireland, and the US. So we try to encourage a movement where possible. Obviously, that's been difficult in the current environment. So we um, we have 35, 40 nationalities. So wherever we can bring talent from, however we can develop talent, we've committed to programs, even FeeTech and other programs. We've brought people in, either who are in career, career transition or whatever. We've sort of invested a lot in that over the years, and, and actually it's worked out very successfully. You know, for 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 so we're all paths are important. It's it's challenging, and um, it's particularly challenging in a in a world where if you go very extreme from a hybrid perspective and from a remote working perspective, it levels the playing field in terms of where people are at. And that ultimately can be a bit of a disadvantage to, I think, Ireland Inc. in terms of getting people together. And and uh, so again, that's why I say it's an extreme, it's an interesting year ahead, I think year or two, because we need to continue to attract lots of talent from abroad. We need to give the best opportunities to our upcoming graduates. We need to attract as many into the industry from other disciplines. And, uh, and everybody is trying to uh, grow because the tech sector is, is bouncing, you know, so it's mm. challenging, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, just a question in, uh, thank you, Mike. What experience and qualifications would we need to apply? And could you provide us with your contact details? So I'm guessing it de depends on the role. Yeah, I mean, the way I would look at this, we have, I mean, we're obviously a high tech industry. We have people who are, you know, uh, we have we have opportunities for, um, like I said to you, sometimes it's not always obvious from the, the, the positions that are on a website, and right? they can sometimes can be a bit um, overpowering because you are looking for, you know, sometimes specialist experience, um, you know, like we have roles in there in cloud security around particular technologies with Azure and Microsoft. So there's a lot of stuff that depends on experience or people come from parts other parts of the industry or maybe have come through a particular college courses but i would encourage it i we're very committed to to me it's about the person and obviously there's a fun you know there's a baseline regarding the technologies and then we can we can often we can find opportunities that are not always apparent uh, i've seen the best product managers and product and solution engineers emerge from sort of places you wouldn't expect and i mentioned earlier we've we've had people come in from you know, even non-engineering core functions and, and sort of come across and, 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 and have great careers. So there's always get the balance between we want specialists quick because we want to have a high impact because we're, we're all under pressure versus investing in people who take a bit longer to come through the career ladder. So if, if in doubt, apply and and uh, we'll try and uh, look, look, look for opportunities for, for and, people who are And Mike, would, your, would, would potential roles typically be advertised on your own website? Do you go through a recruitment agency? Yeah, yeah all, all it... of the above. I mean, a lot of specialist stuff goes through the recruitment agencies. We have our own recruiters, so they will be shaking the trees, you know, in terms of opportunities. Um, so it tends to be a bit specialist to the recruitment agencies, but obviously in doubt, again, you, you, we, we tend to work with certain individuals. But the website's obviously very active and we have our own recruitment groups that then work with people to see, okay, if that doesn't work for you, what about other? other areas of opportunities in a bio. So uh, there's lots of ways to come in. So uh, I'm thinking even potentially for people who may be uh, already liaising with a recruitment agency, uh, they may need to maybe change some of the terms of reference in their uh, in their CV, I guess, maybe to be picked up by yourselves as a as a as a potential to work with you because I, I know there was a, a speaker earlier talking about just what is your digital footprint? What is your your resume, your CV, have you everything that you can possibly have on it without overcrowding it, but that yeah. people like, for instance, the recruitment agency can pick you out and say, this person shows real potential for maybe not necessarily a specialist job, but for yeah. something. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to think that, and that can happen. I, I would, that can happen in different companies that you can kind of get a little bit siloed. And, and so we, what we try to do is create a panel across our company you know, that sort of looks laterally so that somebody comes in that doesn't look like it, you know, isn't a particular fit that 
if they sort of get moved laterally, even if there isn't a position you know, immediately on the website. Obviously, use anyone's signatures the company that way. Obviously, we respect that, particularly if the company if the person subsequently uh, finds a position through uh, the agencies involved, then we would respect that. Obviously, if they separately apply, we still have to respect the fact that the agency was the first touch point. But generally speaking, we take a lot of um, we obviously take take a lot of direct. We're obviously in the business of opening up a lot of graduate positions as well. And it's been an unusual year where I expect a lot of graduates have sort of been waiting to see how things pan out, perhaps take the summer to uh, yeah. to get a life back and, and then sort of, uh, you know, look in the autumn. So we're very interested in sort of uh, looking at people that might have uh, not have committed yet, but are um, very open or perhaps even a year in and, and looking for a you know, great work environment. Lots of, despite my... Uh, despite my own uh, experience, a very relatively young demographic and uh, hey, <laughs> a great Galway nightlife if you choose to hybrid in Galway, right? Man, yeah, Galway is just, I, and, and what's it like now in Galway? Like it's, it's hardly teeming with tourists. Yeah, well, you know, I, I guess I work, uh, we tend to, you know, the downside of it is for us who work particularly with North America and, and that's been for me for the last 20 years is our evenings tend to go late. So I'm always I'm always surprised when I go to go to the city and find that there's a real life happening um, after the evening. But yeah, it's uh, it's very it's kind of a unique atmosphere. It feels like uh, it feels like it's a it's a good time and things are opening up. And uh, but the tourists are a little bit light on the ground. But it's uh, you know it's all way in the summer. So lots of uh, hopefully staycationing uh, Irish people visiting yeah. all the way over the summer. A random yeah. question for you. I. I I often find myself reminiscing with school friends thinking, God, like our, our guidance teacher with the best will in the world, she hadn't a clue what was going on in the world in relation to, you know, the, the workforce beyond yeah. the small mm-hmm. town where I grew up and, you know, secondary school education. What would you like to see, for instance, made available in secondary schools? Or is there something already in secondary schools that you think, I wish more people would do this? Yes, to, to prepare yeah, themselves no, for a yeah. potential career. Uh, yeah, I, kind of, I see that. I, I think it's always, that's a tricky one. You know, I think it's always it's difficult if you're you know, a career guidance teacher and you've sort of been in this piece for some It's difficult to really live the experience. You know, I mean, the tech industry is amazing. You know, it's, it's got its challenges in terms of the speed at which things move. And sometimes the uncertainty that creates as companies get created and, and sort of, you know, change direction. But, you know, the variety of experiences that exist um, on a, you know, at a, at a transnational level um, that sort of encompassed, you know, deep technical skills right through marketing and project management and, and all sort of other people skills. So it's, it's a fantastic industry. You know, if I go back far, far enough, I, still, you know, I think there's such opportunities among career guidance in schools to just bring in speakers. We, we, tend to, we tend to do that a lot. I would really encourage that. And I see, I see, you know, tech fairs and things that like the science, science expo and stuff like that, that happens, you know, um, mm. It's, you know, it's transformational in terms of how it impacts, I think, early career choices. I personally, if you go back to the 80s, can track my engagement with, with engineering to a visit to digital, which is a long time ago. And I think for many people, it's it comes down to see, you know, knowing and seeing. So with these programs where mm. um, in transition year where people get placed in, in industries, I think we all try to contribute to that to make it as available as possible to bring in to bring in early career people and, yeah. and late career people to, 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 to talk in yeah. school. All those things are really, really, really helpful, I think, for people to try and visualize. And, and we do a lot of that. And I know a lot of companies are very committed to doing that. So that's right. what I would And one last quick question uh, from Velman, wondering, do you guys offer internships? And yeah. they've actually given specific dates around January, February 2022, by any chance? Yes, send me an email. <laughs> there you go. There you go now, straight from the horse's mouth, not calling you a horse by any stretch. Uh, Mike, at this stage, I think... We will wrap up with yourselves. I did want to say one thing. You gave me a great laugh in the middle of that when you were saying you have 100 million users. When right. you said the words 100 million, I thought of, what's his name? In, uh, is it Mike Myers films, the uh, Austin Powers, where the, the villain goes, one million. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He says one million dollars, but you have one million users. Equally impressive. Sorry, uh, Mike, it was a real pleasure. Yeah, the reason I say that, it's a lot of bums on seats if you visualize it, right? So, yeah. Okay. Lovely to get to uh, speak to you today and thank you for doing your presentation and for giving your time and your expertise and all that. And Mike, as we know, has, has given us his contact details and said, reach out to him. Reach yeah, out. Yeah, go visit the booth. And, yeah, go uh, visit the booth. We'd love to meet you.